Why does COVID-19 put some people like George Gilbert here in hospital, yet others get no symptoms at all? How are you doing? Lovely. Oh, that's good. Well, he's volunteered to help find out, because part of the answer might lie in his blood. We take all that lot. Whoa, we're we're like vultures, aren't we? Any left. No. Once it's sealed up, the blood's passed to volunteer Ben. His medical research had to go on hold because of the virus, so he set up a team that every day carries COVID samples to be analysed. So Ben, it's quite an odd way to interview someone. It is, yes. How did you get involved in this? So I'd normally be working in the lab on pulmonary hypertension, a rare lung disease, and it's quite frustrating because I can't do that. So I just uh, emailed my colleagues and asked, how can I get involved, how can I help? And it's been excellent, to be honest, because you do feel you're making a difference in these difficult times. Samples are taken to a brand new lab just around the corner on the Cambridge Biomedical Campus. Your blood contains cells that play a key role in fighting off the coronavirus. Some of them make antibodies, others directly kill infected cells. But to analyse them, first you have to separate them off. So at the very bottom, we have the red blood cells are the heaviest and go to the bottom of the tube. At the top, the yellow part is the plasma. It's kind of the solution that your blood floats in normally. And then we're looking at this white small band here. This is the white blood cells that are fighting off your infection. Then it gets more complex. There are lots of different types of white blood cells, all playing different roles. So next door, a machine uses lasers to count how many you've got of each key type. It can then separate millions of them off for more tests. Incredibly, each blob here is a droplet of salty water with one cell inside. I think we'll find that the pattern of white blood cell numbers is going to give us an answer to why some people recover and some people don't. So basically the very ill people might have different cell structures or cells to the people who don't get very ill. Very ill people may start off with a different balance of white blood cells or they may end up with a different pattern that doesn't help their recovery. 260 Adam Brooks patients and staff are giving their blood for this research. Some got very sick, some didn't. The key question for scientists, can you see the difference in their blood? We've found a number of severe abnormalities in patients with advanced COVID disease and some of those point very clearly to potential therapeutics that might impact on that disease. We're also finding that a lot of those abnormalities are visible early in disease and perhaps much earlier than we'd expected. So that's interesting. You might be able to tell much sooner who is going to get very, very sick. Exactly. What we're hoping is that when people develop symptoms that make them suspect they might have COVID and get their very first test when tests become more readily available, at that point we might be able to predict who's going to go on to get severe disease, which should allow us to intervene earlier. By understanding the science of the disease, it's easier to find drugs to fight it. Richard Westcott, BBC News, Cambridge.